Good morning, Adam Grokey from Johnston Grokey here. Uh, welcome to our first live update, uh, finance update. Uh, bear with us if we do have technical dis dif difficulties, we're, uh, we're working on it. But look, what we wanted to focus on at the moment uh, is a few key things, and I'll put some topics in the post. Feel free to comment on this video if you've got any questions, and what we will do is we will get to those questions as they come up. Uh, so anything at all, sing out and we'll cover it off as we go. Now the first thing that a lot of people are talking about at the moment is interest rates and where are they going to go. Now it's, it's very important to understand where interest rates are, uh, are headed because that also gives you the ability to understand what you should do from a borrowing perspective. Now there's two important things that we need to look at here. The first one is the Reserve Bank of, of Australia. Now they meet on the first Tuesday of every month and by meeting on the first Tuesday of every month they look at inflation and, and job employment and also confidence in the market and they look at setting the interest rate or the cash rate and then they will give you a bit of an understanding of where interest rates should go. Now the Reserve Bank believes, uh, rightly or wrongly, that whatever they do from a cash rate perspective will have an impact on the banks and then the banks will then reduce their interest rate or put up their interest rate depending on what the Reserve Bank does. Now there's been some research that has come out recently and suggests that the Reserve Bank actually doesn't have as much power as it used to from increasing or decreasing interest rates because it's really not pegged to what the banks do or where the banks get their money from. Banks source a lot of their money from the wholesale market so it's important to know that the wholesale market funds are increasing for banks. What does that mean for you? Well, in very simple terms, if the Reserve Bank reduces or increases rates, you won't see that full increase or decrease getting passed on by the banks. The banks can actually move their interest rates outside of what the Reserve Bank does. So where do we see the Reserve Bank uh, monetary policy over the, over the next, say, short to medium term, which is you know, 3, 6, 12 months? With all the information that's come out with inflation, and inflation uh, underlying inflation is, uh, is under the bandwidth that the Reserve Bank wants, we really look that the Reserve Bank's not going to make any, any movements at this stage. They're going to sit tight. If anything, there's a little bit of room for a rate cut. However, in taking that into consideration, if they decrease the interest rates, it's not guaranteed and it's probably unlikely that the, interest, that the bank is going to be passing on that full interest rate cut. We've had some feedback and some information come through from the banks recently that as, as early as February or March next year, the bank's cost of funding, so when they get their money from the wholesale markets, is increasing and they're likely to put that on, uh, put that increase on to consumers' rates uh, early next year. Now that brings us to uh, a very good topic at the moment, which is fixed rates versus variable rates. Now, fixed rates versus variable rates, you need to understand that it is very much for your individual circumstance that determines what you should and shouldn't do. Now, to understand what you need to do, you need to know what you're going to be doing in the future because fixed rates are very restrictive with how much extra you can make as repayments, but a variable rate loan, you can pay off as much as you want and with the right product, you can draw that money back out. I would suggest hedging your bets at the moment. Well, two things. If you can't, absolutely can't afford your loan, if interest rates are going to go up and you expect to start a family and you've got extra costs in the near future, then I think fixing an interest rate for a longer period of time now is, is absolutely a fantastic idea. Money is extremely cheap. If you have the ability to make extra payments over your loan, then maybe consider hedging your bets. Now, hedging your bets is, is doing a, a split rate. So what you do is you have part of your interest, uh, part of your loan fixed and part of your loan variable. You want to make sure that if you're fixing your interest rate, say, for five years, you leave the portion of the variable rate part of your loan the amount that you would be able to make as extra payments over the next five years. So if you can make $20,000 uh, extra payment per year, you really want your, your variable rate loan portion to be 20 times five, so $100,000 as a variable rate loan, so you've got the ability to make extra payments because a fixed rate loan will have restrictions on how much extra you can make as a repayment. Okay, the other thing is um, the banks are... Uh, really tightening down on lending policy at the moment. And it's, uh, the question I hear all the time is, why is it harder to borrow now than it was 12 or 24 months ago? Now, that comes down to two things. Uh, one is that there's a lot of pressure from APRA. APRA governs the, the banks and the financial industry, and what they do is they're trying to curb investment lending uh, across Australia. And also, we really need to 
uh, make sure that borrowers can afford their loan repayments now and also in the future. So what the banks have come out and they've done is they've said, okay, well, if you're buying an investment property, we're going to start assessing your affordability at a much higher interest rate in case interest rates go up to 8%. What we're also looking at is we're looking at um, the cost of living has increased. So the banks are now putting in a higher margin for cost of living. What this means is that people, for what they could borrow 12 or 18 months ago, now can't borrow as much money. It may be frustrating, but what it is, it's very good for the banking system and for the economy that we're not lending money to people at all-time low interest rates and interest rates start to increase, which they will eventually. If they do start to increase, in, increase eventually, we really want to make sure that those people can still afford, afford those loans. The banks are also re reducing the maximum loan that they're giving to people. So where they were giving you know, only about three or four years ago 104% loans, 104% meaning that they would actually lend you the full purchase price of the property plus costs, so plus your stamp duty costs. Now, what they're doing is they're only lending a maximum of 95% of the value of the property, or in some cases, only 90%. So you, you, borrowers need to come up with more money to purchase a property. Credit tightening will increase into the future. So I think 2017 is going to see more policy changes and it's going to be harder and harder for people to get credit. We've also seen a crackdown on overseas lending. So overseas investors are finding it a lot harder to buy property here in Australia, which is starting to soften the market from the boom times that we were seeing in the eastern states. Uh, and it's starting to come off a little bit because those buyers can no longer purchase property in, in Australia. Now, have we got any questions? Cool. Nice pocket square. Nice pocket square. Thank you for whoever commented on the pocket square. <laughs> Who was that? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> That's all right. Um, now, the other interesting one is that the, the banks are coming out with uh, some high-risk suburbs that they're seeing around the market. Now, what, what we've seen is that the banks have got a blacklist now of markets or suburbs that they're not going to lend under the same policy for, for other suburbs. So we're seeing a reduced LVR. So an LVR is how much you can borrow against the property. So what we're actually seeing in South Australia is mining towns, not surprisingly, uh, starting to appear on those markets. So Wyala, Roxby Downs. The suburbs and the areas, the regional areas that are re reliant on just one industry doing quite well for that, for that economy to grow and also for the house prices to be sustainable. So we are seeing uh, reduced LVRs there to as low as 50%. The other interesting one, and this is probably some thoughts around uh, the oversupply that may be occurring in the CBD, Adelaide CBD, a high-rise apartment space, is that the CBD is now on some lenders' panel as a, as a higher risk, not higher risk, but just higher risk at an oversupply of apartments, which means that the banks are only lending between 70 or 60 to 80 percent LVR, where you can go to surrounding suburbs of the CBD and you can borrow up to 95 percent. Something to keep an eye on. If there's anything that changes from that perspective, we'll keep you updated. Thank you very much for watching.